So, what do you do when your friend asks you to start creating content for his YouTube channel? You say yes, obviously. Luckily, I already have this nice YouTube studio that I built for a previous work. However, the audio down here is pretty terrible. I'm in my basement, and in this basement, right over past this wall that's to the right of me, uh, I've got a water heater and a furnace, and then beyond that, I've got a washer and dryer just over here. Uh, and it's got concrete wall and it's just the, the echo is bad. Everything about this situation is terrible for audio. So I picked up some producer's choice sound blankets, some Matter Hackers build series PETG and Fusion 360. And together, I think those things can solve my problem. I'm Sean Connolly and this is 3D Printing Nerd. This episode of 3D Printing Nerd sponsored by Matter Hackers. So for those of you who don't know me, again, I'm Sean Connolly, I'm Joel's editor, and I usually edit a couple of videos for Joel per week. But again, he did ask me to start creating some content outside of the stuff that he does because he knows I'd kind of like to do that. Like I said in the intro, I do have some walls here that could serve as some mounting points for these producer's choice sound blankets, but I do have some wood beams above me here that I can drill some hooks into and then use these metal grommets that are in the producer's choice sound blankets and hang those up along both walls and then maybe even create a bit of a box in further past the camera uh, to kind of just really trap in this audio. Again, Matter Hackers did provide me some PETG, their build series, which I will be using to make those hooks. And the reason for PETG, I just wanted them to be a little bit more sturdy than what standard PLA would give me, just because these, <laughs> these sound choice blankets, they are a little heavy, they're a little thick. I got the idea from watching Caleb over at DSLR Video Shooter on YouTube. He has a ton of great content when it comes to creating your own studio. He is in a very similar setup to what I have in, my, in this basement here. So if you're into filmmaking or into creating your own YouTube studio or that kind of stuff, Caleb is a great guy to check out, again, over at DSLR Video Shooter. So in order to design these hooks, we have to hop into Fusion 360 and let's do that. Now that we're in Fusion 360, the first thing that I like to do is set up my shortcut menu and add things that I'm gonna be using in the design. The S key is gonna bring up your model toolbox. I'm gonna to be using the center rectangle tool, so I'll add that. Uh, just so you know, the center version of each tool is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. The tool will expand from center. In order to find what you're looking for, just type out the name and then click the arrow to the right and that will add it to the menu. Uh, and I will also be needing the center diameter circle. So now I can just hit the S key and bring up this menu instead of going through all of Fusion's menus to find what I need. Clicking the box in the top right corner will align the sketch plane, and I'm gonna be using the top view for this one. To start the sketch, I'll click and drag from origin and create a basic shape. I want my hook to be a bit longer to give it enough surface support for the heavier sound blankets. So I'll go with 165 millimeters long and about 25 millimeters wide. Now that I've got the basic shape, I can click on the sketch to select it and hit E to extrude the 2D object into 3D space. I want this base to be about 10 millimeters tall. And just so you know, you can click and drag this box to orbit around the model and check out what you've done. It's very helpful when checking your work. I know I want the edges to be rounded. Uh, I just think that'll look better than having these sharp edges. To adjust multiple edges though, just hold shift and click on each edge you'd like to adjust and hit the F key to bring up the fillet menu. The top and bottoms are gonna be 10 millimeters. And for the sides, we'll go with smaller two millimeter edges. That'll give us a nice rounded look with a flat surface on the bottom. Now I'm gonna add the actual hook, the thing that we're gonna be hanging the blankets on. Bringing up the shortcut menu again, I'll select the center circle and select the top of the base to start the sketch. I want the hook to be about a third of the way up the base. Clicking and dragging will create the circle. And I know the grommets and the sound blankets are 10 millimeters wide, so we'll just make the hooks about 9.5 millimeters. Hitting E to extrude and selecting the circle, I'll make the hook 50 millimeters tall off of the base. It might be a bit too tall, but I just wanted to give it some length so that the blankets were less likely to slip off. Now I'm gonna give the hook some support. So what I'll do is grab the rectangle tool with the R key. From the top of the circle, I'll click and drag, making the width 9.5 millimeters just like the hook is. And then 32 millimeters long. Since this sketch was on the base, it's automatically cut around the hook like you can see here. Now just hit E to extrude, and I'll bring it up about 20 millimeters. And I want the support to curve just like the rest of the top of the model does, so I'm gonna do that by adding a fillet, and then clicking and dragging the arrow down, I can just adjust the fillet right into the hook. Now all that's left is to make the holes for the screws. After measuring the screws, I know that the top of the screws are about nine millimeters wide, and the screw itself is about four millimeters wide. And I'm gonna create two screw holes for this longer base. 
I'll hit the S key to bring up the shortcuts and select the center circle again. Selecting the top of the base for my sketch plane to create the first hole. I want this first hole to be nine millimeters so that the top of the screw can be flush with it. In order to do this, I'm gonna cut into the model by hitting E to extrude and then making the number negative. And I'm gonna go about four millimeters into the model. Then selecting the plane that I've just created, I'll use the center circle again to create a four millimeter circle for the rest of the screw. Hit E to extrude again, and this time I'm gonna do negative six millimeters to cut all the way through the model. Repeat these steps further down into the base to create the second hole. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this, to, you know, the whole duplicating the hole process. I just don't know what that is just yet. Uh, and I'm, like I said, I'm pretty new at this. And there we go. That's our hook. Now, I know that I could have probably just used screws to prop up these blankets, but I just wanted to get my feet wet in Fusion 360 and see if I could create something that I could use around the studio. That would just look a little bit better than drilling in screws. Plus, I've got the tools to do it, so why not? So that was awesome. Nice and simple. I'm sure it's not the best design. I'm sure I did things wrong. I'm really new to Fusion 360, just like Joel is, but they should do the trick. Now we gotta print them out and then see if they work. Fingers crossed, let's hope they do. So the print settings that I used for the Matter Hackers build series PETG in black were as follows. 0.15 millimeter layer height, three perimeters, five bottom layers, seven top layers, 90 degrees on the bed and 250C on the nozzle. And this is how they turned out. Super blurry. I think they turned out pretty well. The top layer looks really nice and smooth. They are just pretty simple shapes with a cylinder, a rectangle, and some fillets, and all that stuff. But they'll get the job done, and they don't need to be too pretty because they're just going to be hanging up in these uh, these beams here. The Matter Hackers Build Series PETG printed out fantastically off the Prusa. So now I'm going to take the drill, and we're going to get to uh, putting them up. Pet, pet, pet. Bounces correctly. And I am done. That's it. The sound panels are up. Uh, hopefully you can tell some sort of difference in the way I sound. Hopefully there is. Otherwise, that's a big waste of time and money. I'd like to thank Matter Hackers for providing the PETG that I use to print those hooks. Matter Hackers does have a great video that you can go check out for all you need to know about getting started with PETG. That link is down in the description. A couple of things I learned along the way, you should definitely, definitely measure out where you're going to place those hooks because there is just a very fine amount of space between the grommets and I did have to stretch and maneuver things a little bit as I was going and that kind of screwed things up a little bit. The other thing is that with PETG, you're going to want to use some glue stick on your print bed because PETG does stick really well to the print bed and then it does help loosen it when you go to remove the print from the print bed. Floop. Let's just do a quick compare. Again, this audio is with the furnace running and with the sound panels up. Again, this is with the furnace running and sound panels up into my lavalier microphone. And now I'm gonna play you a clip from the beginning of the video where the panels were not up with the furnace running in the background. Uh, and you've got concrete wall and it's just the, the echo is bad. Everything about this situation is terrible for audio. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you can give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, if you didn't like the video, that's great too. You can also leave a comment down below to let Joel know if you'd like to see more of me or if you don't want me on his channel at all. That's fine, I understand. Beyond all that, please subscribe if you feel so inclined and ring that bell to be notified of when cool new stuff is uploaded to this channel. And remember, hug each other more. As always, high five.